Guruvyo Namaha. We ended our session with 14 principles of Henry Fiore. Today, we will discuss on principles of scientific management of F. W. Taylor. Before going into the topic on principles of scientific management, few lines about F. W. Taylor. F. W. Taylor was the first person who insisted on the introduction of scientific methods in management. It was he who along with associates made the first systematic study of management. He developed a theory of management which came to be known as scientific management. Therefore, Taylor is considered as a father of scientific management. Taylor mainly concerned with the problems of increasing the efficiency of workers, eliminating wastage in factories and maximum utilization of resources. Taylor has made significant contribution to the theory of management. Before going into the principles of scientific management, first we will understand what is scientific management. So what is scientific management? Scientific management means conducting business activities according to standardized tools, method and trained personnel in order to increase the output, improve the quality and reduce the cost and waste. In simple terms, it means the applications of science to management. We will move on with the principle of scientific management. There are four principles under your scientific management. First one, science not rule of thumb. Second, harmony not discord. Third, cooperation not individualism. Fourth one, development of every person to his or her greatest efficiency and prosperity. We will start with the first principle, science not rule of thumb. According to this principle, Taylor stressed that each job performed in the organization should be based on scientific enquiry and it should not be on intuition, experience and hit miss methods. Rule of thumb means managers relied on personal judgment in attending to the problems they faced in the course of managing their tasks. Whereas, scientific decisions are based on cause and effect. The work assigned to any employee should be observed, analyzed with respect to each task and the time involved in it. The objective of such observation and analysis is to determine the one best way of performing the work and to determine the standard output. So, for example, in case of rule of thumb, the standard time required to do a particular job is fixed by the manager on the basis of his own past experience. But Taylor improvised a scientific way of fixing the standard. Second principle is harmony not discard. This principle suggests that there should be a complete harmony and proper understanding between management and workers and they should work together for achieving the organizational goals. There should not be any conflict between the management and the workers. Both should realize the importance of each other and feel that they are part of the same family. In order to achieve this, Taylor recommended complete mental revolution on the part of both the management and workers. What do you mean by mental revolution? It is nothing that there should be a change in the outlook and attitude of management and workers towards each other from competition to cooperation. Both should develop positive thinking for each other and should work with harmony and avoid discard as their goals are in one direction. Say for example, the main objective of workers is to earn more, whereas objectives of management is to produce maximum. 
instead of discard for each other's objectives workers can earn more by producing more which will, which will help in turn to maximize their production also third principle is cooperation not individualism this principle is an extension of principle of harmony not discard this principle states that there should be a complete cooperation between the management and workers close cooperation between the management and workers is necessary to ensure that workers work is done in accordance with the plans and standard of performance if there is no constant and willing cooperation between the management and workers then the maximum output for both cannot be achieved to achieve cooperation or management should welcome suggestion from employees and reward them if their suggestion prove to be beneficial for the organization workers should not resist from going on strike and make unnecessary demands according to taylor there should be an utmost equal division of work and responsibility between the workers and management last principle is development of each and every person to his or greatest efficiency and prosperity taylor insisted that due care should be taken while selecting the employees after selection they must be given jobs according to their qualifications physical mental and intellectual capabilities the selection employees must be sent for training from time to time to improve the skills and work performance effort should be made to develop each employee to his greatest efficiency we will have a summary of our four principles starting with the first principle science not a rule of thumb what is the science and rule of thumb summary is that it helps to replace the old rule of thumb approach second it consists of observation and analysis of each work determination of standard of work and to ensure that work is to be done best possible way third one he focuses on research and study for new method of management time motion and fatigue method research are necessary for the second principle harmony not discard harmony focuses on the unity of action while discard means different approach owners and workers have different interest manage as to cope with the interest of both to maintain unity to avoid the difference in work in any organization third principle cooperation not individualism monitor worker performance and provide instructions and supervision to ensure that they are using the most efficient ways of working as a unit last one development of each and every person to his or greatest efficiency and prosperity industrial efficiency depends on individual competences taylor was of the view that the concern of efficiency could be built in the process of employee selection children we will end up today's session with this topic next session will be dealt in the next session thank you